this episode, we travel the Bourgogne track east and west into the McAllister Gorge. On the way, we have to drive a section ominously called Axelbreaker Hill. I also show a comparison how tracks can change after grading and the water crossing not to do. This was the day we had to say goodbye to Rod who left us and Stephen and I were still going on for another day. Now we're making our way towards the Licola road and then Stephen and myself plan to drive the treacherous Axelbreak Hill. Beside the Mount Sunday track, the northern end of the Bourgogne track was probably the most interesting and had a few small little technical obstacles. It is not to compare with the western section of the Bourgogne track, which includes Axelbreaker Hill, but still there are a few little rock steps here and I took a bit more interesting line just for the fun of it. There's also a pretty good switchback driving down towards the uh, Licola Road. Again, if you're towing in the Victorian high country, that is definitely stuff you need to take into account because that would be pretty hard with a camper trailer or not to mention a caravan, which you shouldn't take there in any case. The best way to show the steepness of these tracks would be from the side. However, due to the trees that's not possible. Film from the top or even from in-car never really show how steep these tracks really are. Not far after we crossed the Lecola road and said goodbye to Rod who made his way home. For us it was time to tackle the western section of the Bourgogne track and the dreaded Axelbreaker Hill. Here I give you a good example how it looked in 2017 when I last drove it. To be honest, even then I wasn't sure why it was called Axelbreaker Hill because I can't really see how you can break your axles there. We had a Discovery 4 in our group who drove it as well. If you choose your lines carefully, there was really no issue driving up it. However, it certainly was fairly rocky, loose and if you were in an unlocked vehicle, you probably would be struggling for traction at some stage. This is the same track in 2023. Every obstacle is removed and it's pretty much just a steep graded track. Unfortunately, that also means much easier access to the McAllister River and that in return means a lot more people there and the associated side effects as we will show a bit later. The other end of the track where you have the steep descent down to the McAllister River had also been graded and looked very very different to 2017. Here in comparison is a quick glimpse how it looked in 2017. I think it's interesting to see how the tracks really can change from year to year. As you may have guessed, it was time for a swim. Unfortunately, it was Saturday morning and given the tracks were graded and easily accessible, it was quite busy at the river. We found a small little spot, just enough room for two cars to check out the river and have a swim. It wasn't really big enough for camping though. If you take one step, then you will be a little closer. To your dream then if you stay just where you are Keep that chin held up and fight your battles with your feet And hobbled where you'll find a path that The 
water levels were much lower than last time I was here when we decided not to cross after we saw other people nearly floating away. This time the crossing of the McAllister River would be easy. Let me know in the comment section if you would have crossed the river at these water levels. I already had my 105 on 35s at the time, but the other two cars was an 80 series on 33s and a Land Rover Discovery 4 full of electronics. So the sensible decision was for us not to cross. There are two things I really try to avoid in my four wheel drive, rolling it and drowning it. But let me know in the comment section what you think. Personally, I think these are quite unnecessary risks I would not take unless I really had to. Check out that white car which crossed before these guys and had engine problems after the crossing. <laughs> it's the last day, Saturday. Tomorrow morning, still a good drive out, but uh, I'm going to be in Jameson again and then making our way home. What an eventful, beautiful, exciting trip it was. So possibly we're getting some rain. Here at, at the McAllister River, uh, down the Bourgogne track, well, camping is a bit average, I have to say. Not as good as I have it in memory, but that was some time ago. Fairly busy here because I guess the track is graded. Far more accessible now than it used to be. Oh, look at that clouds here. Especially in these deep gorges, it's a good idea to send Dennis up to check the weather. And it certainly looked very cloudy and the forecast predicted rain for us. You see, I'd love to camp down by the river, but I'm not that silly. Especially not that low, never know. Nevertheless, our new camping spot had a pretty good water hole and we obviously went for a few swims along the way. And it's busier here than Parramatta Road. I hope we're going to get a good night's sleep because cars coming and going 24-7, nothing available. They drive in, they drive out. Not something I'm going to be back in a hurry, I have to say. There's the next one coming. Beautiful river, but way too busy for my liking, that's for sure. Dinner for the day. White red quinona, veggies, steak. Pretty quick and healthy dinner. Uh, looks like the rain has arrived. I know, I don't want to pull the awning out because it's a last night camping, otherwise uh, gonna be have to dry it with a canvas. We want to leave early, so we probably go early to bed. Forecast is only one millimeter, so not too bad, but we shall see who believes in forecasts. Now the whole week we had beautiful weather. Now it started to rain. I had to pack down the Austin Bunker Pro every single guy rope. The two front ones are usually never packed down, otherwise it pulls. We'll see how well that goes or whether I have to get up in the middle of the night and uh, put the awning up. We shall see. Uh, good morning. It's six o'clock in the morning. I'm still using my little OLED round light here. It's permanently in the tent. Uh, quite good. But anyway, it is now six o'clock. We went super early to bed because of the rain and we didn't have an awning up and nothing. And I think we're gonna get a going now. Super misty and foggy. It was pretty warm, not too much rain. So it turns out that if you put all the guy ropes down, the water runs up, but you cannot afford to not pack everything in, including these here. I left these not plugged, and then water started pooling. But otherwise, yeah, it held up all right. It wasn't too crazy the rain though, but yeah. Now I'm gonna get ready. 
morning. Morning, Stephen. How, how are was, you? How was your night? Wonderful. Good. No water inside, always a good night. That is good. I had actually a good night's sleep, except the loud talking, somewhere at 12 or 1. Yeah, down on the our fisherman friend, I think. Yeah. Packing in in the wet, even more important. So let me show you. My wet fly is in this waterproof bag. Also makes it much quicker to pack in. And my stretcher is here. So, yeah, I find that brilliant. Makes it super quick to pack in if the fly is still wet. At the moment it's soaking wet. I don't have it wet the car. And yeah, when I set up tonight, it dries fairly quickly. Ah, green hill track, nice track. Pretty steep, windy, as I said, unfortunately graded. Especially now, we're pretty much driving in the clouds here. And yeah, I love it. Early morning. Can hardly see Stephen in front of me. Beautiful. Obviously, what goes up must come down. So on the steep downhill slope, especially after some rain, really important to use your engine braking because otherwise you can start really sliding down. And if you have to support braking with your foot brake, then you've got to feather it just very gently. Who has been doing all the grading here? I don't know about you, but for me, driving early morning up into the clouds has something magical. And confirm once more that getting up and driving early does more often than not reward you with some spectacular views. After stopping for coffee at the Glen Fallock helipad, we found ourselves nestled in between the clouds, with the sun fighting hard to break through. It left us with some spectacular footage I'd like to share with you. got to say I love my campfire it never gets old it's like bush TV but watching the clouds whirl around that is as good as a campfire I have to say different but as meditative um, I could have stood on top of that hill for way longer watching the clouds, but it was time to move on. Continuing on on Copspur was a beautiful drive with some spectacular ridgelines. Oh, uh, so the wildfire, I think it must have been uh, 09, 10, came up on the west side of this ridge to Copspur. And the concern was the town of Lacola on the other side of the spur, so they were uh, very nervous, nervous about holding the fire on the west side of the spur um, and they managed to do that with a concentrated aircraft to attack along the top of Cobb Spur and um, uh, some diligent uh, back burning going on on the other side around La Cola and uh, managed to save the oil well, protect the town from any fire impact. Yeah, lucky. Had nice small little community there. I thought it would be interesting to have a look at this top-down view of one of the many switchbacks we drove. Uh, Stephen just came in over the radio. He's a little bit ahead. That the road we are supposed to take to get out is uh, closed. Uh, if that is really a no-through road, that would be a long detour, huh? Uh, sure, it's a bit adventurous here. That road, very overgrown, and mind you, it's not a long road to get us down to the main track so don't have to backtrack that much if we really can't get through uh, when you get to the Y junction turn right come down uh, everything's good I copy that that is good to hear 
So, time to air up. Uh, will be gravel two wheel drive. One thing I'm still using in the fifth year and absolutely love is the JMAC pen to air up. I reckon fastest, most comfortable way to air up. It's not a compressor, you still need a compressor. Um, it's pretty much a tire pressure sensor monitor switch. And it means I can do other things in the meantime. Compressor is going on. Now I just switch it on. And everything else is automatic. It beeps when it's on 30. And finish. Yeah, we back on tar. The first time in six days. Mind you, the tar didn't last long. And while there are some beautiful and serene parts on the Lecola road towards Jameson, overall it's one of the worst the roads Lecola in the Victorian high Jameson country, road especially around the Mount Skeen the area. Road in the high country. It is just painful. From Mount Skeen onwards, the corrugation and rocks and so on, relentless. Back there, it's like, it, like it never existed. Like we're exactly. Ready to go again. Look, I don't mind. Let's do another six days. Okay. <laughs> Next time. Next time, yeah. So we were back at Granny's flat and that was the end of our trip. But like you may have guessed, while Stephen had a power nap, I decided to go for one last swim. Sadly the last swim in the Victorian high country rivers for a little while. Beautiful. Yeah guys, thanks a lot for watching this incredible Victorian high country adventure and sharing it with us. As always, I would greatly appreciate if you could share, like and subscribe. And maybe if you feel generous, even head over to Patreon or buy me a coffee and support me with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much and I hope to see you along the tracks. Mm -hmm.